to our uh, January uh, remote uh, Brooklyn Tech PA meeting. Um, me and I are delighted to see you all joining us tonight. Um, we've got a uh, few items of housekeeping business uh, and then we'll be joined by um, Principal Newman probably in about half an hour or so. Uh, I am in the middle of a really bad cold uh, not COVID, fortunately. So I may be on mute and uh, in black screen for a little bit of this meeting. So I apologize for that. Um, but I am uh, glad, glad everyone's here tonight. Um, we need to do a call to order, and I'd like a second. I'll second. Call to order. Great. Thanks, Chris. And um, we, I guess, Wave the minutes from we use that's what we usually do wave reading of the minutes from the previous month. Uh, can I get a second on that? I'll second. Okay, great, thanks. Um, all right, so um, first I just wanted to sort of give you uh, a couple of feedback points from our safety committee meeting. Uh, we met last week, they uh, the repairs and the cleanup from the uh, what was a pretty small. Uh, fire actually in the uh, second floor bathroom. Uh, it's all been taken care of. Uh, there is some updates to the general response protocols. And um, I think this is something that uh, Principal Newman might address uh, is the expansion of the Wi-Fi throughout the school. There was a student sit-in, um, which uh, I think got the desired effect. Uh, there are teachers and I believe uh, other staff members who are going to be doing uh, diabetes and glucogen training uh, for, there's a number of students that um, are diabetic and uh, they we, we need to sort of train some of our personnel to uh, be able to address any kind of medical emergency. Uh, so that is ongoing. And that's just sort of a brief um, uh, update on that committee. We meet monthly, uh, there'll be more information going out with Tech Talk and, um, so the other thing I'd like to do is uh, just mention one request uh, for the PA. Uh, there is going to be um, a faculty in training on January 30th uh, in service, and we are going to be covering the lunch expenses and also some team building uh, exercises. We're going to be uh, awarding Amazon cards to the winning team. Um, so uh, more to come on that as well. So I thought what we would first do before we get to the treasurer's report is hear from our fundraising uh, committees. Uh, we'll start with uh, Big Bad New Lunar New Year, which is February 3rd. And Sharon and Kim can fill us in on that. A lot going on, obviously, since that's just a couple weeks away. Uh, committees. Uh, we'll start with uh, Big Bad New Lunar New Year. Which sorry, is sorry, Hamilton. 3rd. I've got YouTube and going and I've got a bit of an echo. So. Kim, please unmute yourself. All right, can you guys hear me now? Yes. I'm just trying to turn that down so you don't have to hear the the, the YouTube uh, replay. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, going to go on. I'm going to go on mute. With the Lunar New Year. Um, we have over 400 people coming and there's still time to buy tickets if any of you would like to come. Um, you're going to be receiving a email tomorrow um, asking you guys to very kindly purchase a mega raffle ticket. We have about 150 more to sell. You could win $2,500. You'll get all the details tomorrow. Just please, please read the email when you get it tomorrow. And uh, we really hope you join us on February 3rd. It's going to be a great event. We have some wonderful student and parent uh, entertainment, and it's just a nice time for us all to get together and get to know each other. Uh, last time we did this was about two weeks before uh, COVID. So it'll be great to see all of you. Please consider coming. Um, Sharon, are you, I don't know, is Sharon here? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, um, not sure if um, there, are, there are Chinese parents here, like I need to speak in Chinese. Maybe not. Let me, let me, let me see. I can tell. So, yep, so you have covered everything. Um, yep, um, just uh, need to mention, um, we have turned off the ticket, uh, the link for the ticket purchase because we reached to our capacity. 
the the maximum capacity. So we want uh, parents to purchase the raffle tickets to support is that. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, would you like to um, translate for our Chinese language members? Uh, I do not see any, um, uh, Okay, yeah, not many, but I could. Um, 大家好, um, 我们2月3号的农, uh, 新年, uh, 春节, uh, 晚会, 会在, um, 六点钟开始, uh, 现在那个, 买票就已经截止了, 但是呢, 我们还有那个抽奖券, 还需要大家帮忙, 因为还有160多张, 还没有卖完, 你只需要花20块钱, 然后就有一个机会会赢得高达两千五百块的大奖如果你不用亲自去那个餐馆参加这个宴会如果你不能参加没关系然后那个支票会寄去你的家里等我们会电邮给你的所以希望大家帮忙多买一些奖券然后帮
uh, Bard Manhattan, Bard Queens, Millennium Manhattan, and the iSchool. Um, we have been discussing about this in our monthly Zoom among the specialized high school co-presidents. And there was a resolution drafted by the portfolio schools just before the holidays uh, opposing, you know, in, in writing, opposing opposing the cuts, and which will, I think, be sent to Chancellor Banks. Uh, and what we're going to do, this was sort of passed unanimously among our PA co-presidents group, is to draft a letter uh, also supporting the resolution that was passed uh, against the cuts. So there'll be more to come there. We do know that there are cuts in the works, uh, no matter what, but we are hoping to stave off uh, what would be very, very uh, significant a transformation of Brooklyn Tech and indeed all of our specialized high schools, which is a one of the crown jewels of maybe the crown jewel of the DOE. So more to come on that front. Uh, me and I will be going to a Zoom tomorrow on that. Um, and then I also wanted to mention, speaking of budget matters, uh, we'll be hearing from Ellen Goldstein here in just a minute. Uh, we do have uh, some good uh, money in our reserve that we are uh, going to be talking through about exactly how to spend it if we want to reallocate uh, funding from one line item to another. Uh, one thing that we're planning to do at our next monthly meeting is to create a line that would allocate $25,000 uh, for the CIE re request, which is uh, travel abroad uh, for students that qualify. It's a, it's a, 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 a need-based uh, matching grant program. Uh, we work with a nonprofit. I believe they're based in Chicago. Uh, Stuyvesant has just started working with them this year. Uh, there is an anonymous donor, a former foreign languages teacher, a woman, who uh, is going to increase her matching uh, grant if we go to $25,000. We've participated in this program for a few years now. Uh, about 125 kids have applied already. There was a deadline, I believe it was this week, um, I think yesterday, in fact, uh, and they have to have a faculty recommendation letters. They have to have a proposal. They, it's a pretty elaborate process uh, to apply, and the grant money either covers 10% to up to 100% of need, depending. Uh, these are not all foreign language enrichment uh, programs in July. They are all also some, in about 15% of them are for things like scientific research projects uh, abroad as well. So we are planning to move forward with creating a line that would allow us to allocate that $25,000. Uh, the donor will then match that and then and then match her own $50,000, you know, the total of $50,000. So it would up us up to $100,000 total that would allow us to grow this program from something like six to eight students to about 40 or so uh, that would be able to go. And again, we've got well over 120 students that have applied. So um, more to come on that. Uh, we'll be having to vote on this as a general membership, but we wanted to get the word out. There'll be more coming in Tech Talk, uh, and we'll be um, uh, voting on it in our next uh, PA meeting in February. So with, without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Treasurer Goldstein, who is sitting across the living room from me, and uh, I'm I'm going to mute myself uh, so there won't be an echo effect, uh, and uh, Ellen will give us the report. Hi, good evening, everybody. This will be a pretty quick Treasurer's report um, this month. Uh, as far as fundraising, I just want to thank everybody who contributed in December. Um, we raised uh, a little over $16,000 in, in check donations and online, we raised about uh, $39,000. As far as where we are year to date in fundraising, we did budget pretty conservatively. Um, and as you heard Patricia say, we are a bit behind where we were last year. Um, we've raised so far about $36,700 against an $85,000 target for, for check and cash donations. And we've raised $91,900 against uh, uh, online fundraising goal of $115,000. So please consider making a contribution so we can make those goals that we've set for ourselves. Most of our planning over the, um, the past month has been around our signature fundraising activities, Lunar New Year, 
and our spring gala, um, which you'll hear more about, uh, um, for, I think from Tiffany in a minute. Um, but for Lunar New Year, um, we set a goal of raising $20,000 towards that event. And we've raised $40,000 towards that event. Um, obviously there are expenses that are yet to come in for the event that are not yet reflected in the budget. Um, but I was really pleased to see how well we were doing. So thank you very much. Um, and kudos to Kim for, for bringing in a bunch of new sponsors for the Lunar New Year event, um, um, this year, uh, which is great. Um, and I think that's sort of about it for me uh, for this month. Do you want to mention, um, Ellen, anything about some of the uh, items we'll be discussing independently, or is or is that premature? Um, there's, there's. Can you mute? There are a few lines in our budget against which uh, we have not spent any money. And some of those lines are kind of legacy things that have been in the budget for a while. Um, so the conversation we've been having on the PA board uh, is whether there are new needs or other um, goals that uh, we or priorities that the PA could support for the school. Um, so we'll be coming back to the general membership probably next month with some suggestions of how we may reallocate some funds uh, to some new priorities. Um, some of the things we've been talking about are how we could provide a little more robust um, support for college prep. Um, but again, I, I think um, until we have an internal discussion of the PA board, um, we're not really prepared to go into detail about that, but we definitely will in the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Everybody hear me okay? Um, I guess we're waiting on Principal Newman to join us. Let me just... Hamilton, could I just ask everybody, um, we, we need you to have your full name um, when you sign in, because that is how we are able to produce the sign-in sheet for the meeting and we know who attended. So if you need help, you know, please put something in the chat. We'll be happy to help you change your name, but we really do need you to change your name because going forward, we will have to put you into you can you can view the meeting from YouTube if you do not um, put your full name in going forward for the next meeting. Thank you. Well, we're That's happy awesome. to help you. So just let us know. I also just want to respond. Uh, I got a DM just now from Camille in the chat. I wasn't able to respond because I'm technologically challenged. Uh, but I want to say that she raised the issue of privacy concerns by identifying yourself and uh, and your student. Uh, this has come up in our conversations with DOE. Uh, she did mention another school that is in trouble. Uh, DOE is requesting that. Mary, I don't know if you want to, Mary's with us, right? Um, we're, we've been in uh, contact in the last couple of days with representatives at DOE who are requiring this going forward. So as far as we know at this moment, it is DOE policy. Presumably it's been legally cleared. Uh, if there's any issue, we will come back, we'll revisit it, but we've already, we've already flagged it for DA, DOE for our purposes. Um, and also, if, if you're uncomfortable, um, you are welcome to view this. We are streaming live on YouTube. If you're uncomfortable putting your name in, you're more than welcome to, to view it. And you can hear everything that's going on via YouTube without having to present your name. Okay. Uh, Tiffany, did you want to, um, I, I skipped you. I didn't mean to. Did you want to speak to the gala, which is coming on May 9th? I know Sumi couldn't be with us this evening. Yes, hi, sorry, my daughter isn't in, so I'm like <laughs> outside. So, um, but yes, we set the date for May 9th, it's a Tuesday. Um, we're still fine tuning, you know, the, the small nuances. We have a meeting early next week, but right now we just wanted to um, just get the conversations going, start uh, forming a, a bigger team and just looking for how people to help, um, you know, um, set up the gala, um, break down and uh, secure donations and, you know, auction items. So that's um, one of the big things. Just get the conversations going. Any businesses or organizations that you may know and you can be out to just to secure items to auction or, or for the raffles and um, we will get the forms um, I'm hoping in the next week after our 
for meeting um, just to get the forms that they will officially fill out and, um, you know, and we can secure a place and a, a location and, the, um, you know, to pit any items that we receive. We're just working on that and trying to get the forms to everybody. But um, in the meantime, please just get the conversations going. If you know, or if you can donate a service, a business, it can be anything, gift certificates. We're also looking for um, like big auction items. Um, you know, there were Disney tickets in the past, um, you know, a small getaway, uh, you know, we're just trying to secure, secure um, bigger items. And then we also have a bunch of smaller auction items as well. And if you have any questions, I'm going to put it in the chat. Or if you want to volunteer, you can email us at bthsgala. So that's bthsgala at gmail.com. Thank you, Tiffany. I think uh, Hamilton just uh, um, Hamilton just froze, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> and Ellen just froze. So I guess they're coming back. Does anybody have also access to the waiting room? Because Mr. Newman should be here soon. Do you see him? Uh, uh, yeah, I, there's I, no. I, I'm watching for it, Mary. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh there he is. Uh, got yeah, it. There Ellen's is. back. Great, great. You're on time. So yeah. So let's welcome uh, Mr. Newman for the Woo! principal reports. Oh. How are you? Um, so I thought uh, I thought Hamilton was gonna throw some questions at me. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, is Hamilton here? He's currently frozen. He will be throwing He, he is. We just, momentarily. we lost our internet for one second. So I'm oh, connected okay. through my phone. So I'm gonna let him have my computer. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, we lost our signal here. Uh, we've got some uh, apartment internet problems. Uh, I know that um, when I left you all abruptly, uh, we were, uh, Tiffany was just wrapping up her presentation. And now I guess we're going to, we finished the treasurer's report. So we're going to turn to, to Principal Newman for any Q&A he might have. Uh, if you have questions for him, uh, this is the perfect forum for that. Uh, I will try to read them off the chat um, so uh, we can get started. David, are you with us? Yeah, I am. It You're on mute. Oh, sorry. It's right no, David, he's not, he's not on mute. mute. He's not on mute. Yeah. Can you hear us, Hamilton? No, I can't hear you. Can't hear us talking. Yes, yeah, so I think that's a that's a, your problem. Yeah, Mr. Newman, you can go ahead. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, look in the chat, I guess, for some questions. You can put them there. Um, Mr. Newman, maybe you could maybe you could talk a little bit about the schedule with um, the regions and and who's going to school and who's not. Oh, um, okay. Let me uh, let me see. Pull that up really quickly. So the bottom line is this that you only come to school when you have a exam, right? And there are a number of exams that you might be taking. Um, some people are taking various regions, but most people not. The only regions that were given in mass um, are the juniors taking uh, ELA. Um, all the rest are sort of low numbers, although they might affect your child, but you would have gotten an invitation to a regents. Um, and then we are for ninth and 10th grade, um, there are MAPS um, assessments, and those are either morning or afternoon by assignment. I'm trying to pull up the days right now. Um, I know the English Regents is on Tuesday, MAPS is on Wednesday and Thursday with a makeup day on Friday. Um, I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll pull it up whether uh, ninth grade is Wednesday or Thursday and vice versa. Um, hold on a second. 
I'm sure somebody can help me out on that. I'm trying to, all right. Freshmen um, have it on Wednesday. Thank you. So you have it, freshmen have it on Wednesday. Um, then 10th grade will have it on Thursday. You were assigned either AM or PM. Um, and then uh, those are the exams you're coming in for. Um, you would have gotten an invitation. It tells you the room, the time, uh, surely the date and the exam that you're uh, registered for and supposed to take. You only come in for the exam. When the exam is over, you leave. There are no classes um, starting on Tuesday. There are classes on Monday. Um, all right. I, th I think there's some- I'm, I'm, I'm back in the game here. Uh, Dave, you want me to read you questions from sure, the chat? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, so quick question here. Um, which AP classes are offered as ICT? Um, well, uh, it, that's sort of a, I don't know, a backwards sort of question in the sense of this. Students who uh, have ICT in their accommodations, we make the classes for them as ICT, if that sort of makes sense. So it's sort of backward by design. We don't, we don't uh, uh, designate a class ICT if there's not a student who needs ICT for that particular class. So it's a matter of the students that need ICT, um, they're going to get it. And so if uh, we'll make sure they get it usually in the core four, um, that is uh, for students that is science, math, ELA, and social studies. Usually that's the maximum ICT somebody would get depending on their own particular um, accommodations. So if you need ICT for let's say uh, math and you are in AP calculus, we will make an a calculus ICT class. But if not, we won't, if that makes sense. This from Sandra Timko, do you have to come for the MAPS assessment? <laughs> the, the big question. Um, we are, uh, let's see how I'm gonna say this. Uh, you are heavily encouraged to come to the, the MAPS assessment. We think it'll benefit um, you as a, as a parent with information um, and inform your uh, teachers uh, a little bit more about the student to know, especially if they're uh, academic interventions that need to take place for a particular subject um, for your kid. So it does give us some information of uh, where you're at maybe versus where you should be at and we can make uh, interventions accordingly. Okay, from Aiden, Mc Aiden, Aiden Donald, um, Donalds, will there be an SAT prep course for 10th graders for sophomores. Yeah, we currently, uh, there are uh, surely SAT prep course actually through the PA where you guys get, get a discount and whatnot, um, but the school does not offer SAT prep courses per se. That being said, we do offer tutoring in, uh, in across the spectrum of math classes and for ELA. Which are which could definitely have you cross over to help you uh, benefit towards doing well on the SAT. Okay, Shannon Gonnett has asked, can you please put the exams in? I assume she's speaking about the regents information in the chat. Thank you. Is that something you can do, Mary, for us? Or sure, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. I put Mary to work over there. All right, sent it. she's out in the snow. Yeah, I see that. Um, <laughs> Uh, send, the book, send the link. Yeah, yeah I think Alexander C asks for ninth graders, where do we find the invitation to maps? Does that mean ninth graders do not go to school at all next week except for the maps? I am a little confused. Got it. Said. Ninth graders, uh, not so likely you're going to take any regents. Um, ninth graders uh, only come to school likely for maps. Um, and, and Monday. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday, I'm not considering, even though it's part of the week, I'm not calling that Regents Week, but Monday is a regular day of class. Yeah, uh, people are confused right. by that. So, yeah. And so, uh, so they will only come in the MAPS day um, at the time they were assigned, and they should have received that invitation via email. Okay. Uh, um, from quick question. Um, for, so, putting the exam information in the uh, chat is kind of difficult because it, isn't it all different for everybody? It's already been done. I, th I think Tiffany put the link in, right? Am I yeah, wrong? But, on that? Okay. Yes. yes. yes it did. just doesn't say the time. They'll get the um, Times emails for maps. 
Yeah, the, yeah. the, the maps is either AM or PM. It's it, you have your own invitation. So that's I can't tell you what your what your kid, if your kid got morning or late or where they're going. They should have received an invitation with a room number and uh, a time assignment on it. OK, this from Rose Wong. Does maps impact GPA? Absolutely not. Maps has the the the, the score on maps is just to let us know how how far you are and versus maybe where you should be. If you're advanced, if you're where you should be, if you're lacking in some areas, it actually tells us specifically what areas or what units you might be deficient in. So we could help you um, to catch up if you want to call it that. Um, but it has nothing to do with your grade for the course whatsoever. Okay, Kathy Peng Lee asks, where can we find the results to the map assessments? Uh, I didn't get result, results that my child took during the fall and he's a, he's a freshman. So here, uh, so, okay, <laughs> the, here's the full disclosure part. Um, one, uh, although I can go in the portal and access the information, parents for some reason um, currently cannot. So you don't have a, like a login information to see your own child's information. Um, now on, so I can see it, but, and the goal for me is to give it to the, the results to you and have you backpack it from home. Um, the, how can I say this? The module is not it's set up for large schools. It's not so large school friendly. And um, I would have to download and print individually one at a time, um, you know, 3000 times which would probably take me from now till, you know, the end of the year, I would imagine in, in person hours to get that all done. Um, they're trying to build some capability to batch download so I could download, then print, then sort, and then give out. Um, so that's the only reason that you haven't received the results yet. Um, I mean, look, I don't want a barrage of phone calls, you know, like asking to look up the, the map results, which surely, uh, we can do. Uh, but I just have to figure out a way uh, to deliver it well. And so the plan is after this next round to deliver the results from the first round and then the second round at one shot where we figure out an efficient way to be able to do this. And so uh, so that's it. And so the query is out there and the MAPS people are working on it. Uh, they're just, they've never faced a school, you know, that has so many kids and gives these exams to so many kids. So they're, they're trying to figure out something for us. Okay, another question from Alden Donalds. One of my favorite questions, when will the 10th graders be choosing their major? Oh, um, so there is gonna be a uh, hot off the presses. Uh, there is gonna be the major fair date is March 1st. Hold on, let me confirm that date. I think that's a Wednesday. Um, March 1st on a Wednesday is going to be the in-person major fair for students. Um, the portal is going to stay open um, for uh, a week and a half all the way till March 13th. So during that time from the 1st to the 13th, students will be able to select. Um, we will take the last selection if, if students change their mind after a few days, but they'll get a week and a half uh, to select after uh, the major fair. We will be gathering um, questions from people after the major fair, even parents as well, um, that we could try to answer before decisions are finalized. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the major fair kicks off on the 1st, portal opens up on the 1st, portal closes on the 13th. Um, and then shortly we take a uh, probably about uh, a few days. And I would say um, I would approximate by the 17th that week on the Friday um, after the portal closes that you will find out what major that you got into. Uh, just to follow up, excuse me, uh, David, uh, we had talked about an SLT last week about doing some sort of parent only Q and A that yeah. students could participate in, but is designed mostly for parents. Uh, yeah. So they have a better, keener sense of what the majors are. It can go a little more in depth than what is posted on the website. Did you, have, have we figured that out yet? 
Yeah, I mean, we, we were talking about in cabinet. Um, we don't. Uh, we were trying to figure out um, how best to do it. Um, and uh, so we're, we're we're kicking around the notion. It's not something we've done before. Um, I I don't. Uh, well, I. Uh, you know, it's difficult in the sense of if you have, let's say, an open forum for a couple hours and you could bounce from from room to room, that's going to be problematic because you'll have people bouncing from room to room, uh, i.e. major to major, and asking questions that have already been answered. And it'll it'll sort of, but then if you, if you stay the whole time, the two hours, you're not going to be able to go to you know, multiple majors. I don't know. We're trying to figure it out. I, I guess I just gave a little bit too much detail, but we're trying to flush it out so it would be beneficial. The ask is how we could involve parents somewhat in getting at least, in the very least, some uh, questions answered. I think we might be leaning towards collating questions and then putting out like an FAQ sheet instead of like a live Zoom. I think that's where we were leaning. Uh, we just had cabinet discuss this um, yesterday. I think that that's what I was sort of alluding to that we're going to collate a Q and A. So I think we're going to go out and and you'd be able to fill out any questions and equate what major it's for, and then each major a couple of days later will come out with uh, the whole sheet of questions and answered, so that when 100 people ask the same question, we could just answer it once. If that makes sense. Yep. Uh, Alexander C asks, my son has not received the MAPS invitation. How do we receive one? Um, you could just, um, oh, I, I, I imagine, uh, oh, well. Why don't you email me tomorrow and we'll figure something out. I like that. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Coming I'll put out my email address in the there, um, chat there. if you don't Taking know. Snow off. Um, Mary, uh, yeah, I will make sure if she doesn't, she'll have the list of uh, I think you do already of of where every kid's supposed to go, so she could just simply let you know. I don't, but I'll get it. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Shannon got it. Asks when will the results for the upcoming exams be able to view be viewed by parents? Where can we see these results? Well, what exam is the? Uh, uh, maybe the Regents. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, or um, the semester exams. I don't know. Would that go through Jupiter? You, the the grade you know the final exams that you're taking currently right now um in finals week will go into Jupiter um grades are not uh due until actually after the spring starts um so you're not going to get you're not going to be able to view I'm trying to look at dates here a second you're not going to be able to view grades likely until around uh Friday February third. Um, you know, grades that you got from the fall. And surely they'll just come rolling in as your teachers are grading um, final exams. They'll just appear. The second they enter it, you'll be able to see it. Treasure Jackson asks, could you take the maps at home? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one of our freshman reps, Lorraine Wong, asks, can we get the maps results shared in our email instead of printing it out? Yeah, um, not not so easy. They don't. Uh, it's a weird sort of portal, um, and uh, there are a little a little bit of concerns about validity of emails. In other words, if I start sending them as like a mail merge to people's emails, um, there there is a uh, security issue in that regard. Like, do I have the proper email? Am I sending it to the 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 right email? And you know, there's a little bit of concern. I I feel better backpacking at home um but the portal is not so user-friendly that i can make a really a mail merge by any means anyway and so it would still have to be a, a one by one sort of thing erica asks we recently received an email with the largest number of covid cases since we've been getting these notices at over 50 any concerns there um i mean but COVID is always a concern. It's, uh, I will say it's, uh, it, it, you know, my, my concern, uh, you know, is twofold. It's it's not only, of course, students, but it's also staff, which adds, you know, not only health implications, but other implications is people not being, you know, at work for a while and, and classes not 
uh, being taught by their teacher for a while. Um, we've seen over the last, uh, I'm going to say, month and a half, a, a consistent number of COVID cases. I don't see uh, there was an escalation in, in December that has continued to, to this day. Um, I don't think it's, I don't know what a concern means. Uh, they're, not, they're not closing schools, I'll tell you that. And so uh, so if that's what you're talking about, the, the, the DOE uh, does, not, uh, does not seem to, they're not gonna close schools. That, that's currently their policy. Okay, uh, Victoria Lustig asks, February 3rd, we have an honor society ceremony and Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year. How can we combine it? I assume we're not going to do such a thing, but um, I'm not <laughs> sure what the timing was with the honor society ceremony. Uh, so maybe someone can address that. Um, let me look at that. I think it would be who of us maybe uh, to move that. Let me let me see what we could do on that. Um, okay, let me look at that. I know the the lunar New Year celebration is not going to move, so maybe I can move right. uh, the other. Let me. Uh, let me figure out what's going on. Okay, so that is an evening an evening event, David. Um, uh, the the honor society, society ceremony is definitely an after school event. It's you know, so no matter okay. what, I mean, even if it's at four o'clock, I mean, I can't that that ceremony is two hours at least. You're not going to run from one to the other, and so uh, let, let me talk to the NHS people and see what we could do. Okay. Uh, Rose Wong asks a follow up on the maps. If a student is below grade level. What type of intervention will be available and how will it be delivered? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say below below grade level is not really. It's it's like you're in, you're in an algebra class. This is where you should be in algebra. You're not where you should be. And so that's not that's not below grade level. It, it, it more likely is that a couple of the units you're not doing so well on. We alert the teacher. The teacher maybe rolls back a little bit for you, encourages you to go to tutoring to learn this type of map or this unit. And then you, you catch up and then you're all good. Um, I, I It's not, uh, we haven't seen things that uh, people are so far behind, you know, that, that you're, you know, uh, I, I mean, you can't really say grade level because the, the, I mean, then you'd be going all the way back to a former course, you know, it's sort of in high school, obviously you have completely distinct courses, algebra one, geometry, you know, very little to do with each other. And so it's uh, it's just seeing if, you know, where where you're supposed to be and where you're at. And, and it's more like uh, smaller interventions, not like a radical thing, like you need to retake a course and we need to figure that out in some regard, right? So um, yeah, I, I don't know if that that helps. Erica is asking a follow-up question to her COVID question, which I don't really 100% understand. Okay. She said, maybe the department's recorded the major info sessions from during COVID. I assume this is uh, the... the I, was responding, I was responding to the questions about major sessions and parents wanting information on the majors because we watched them, on, uh, we watched them live during COVID. They right. had information sessions, so maybe yeah, they've yeah, been yeah, recorded. Yeah. That was a, it was just a, a comment. Right. Yeah, okay. I think there still are little videos up from all the majors. Um, and if not, I could put them back up again. But, you know, we did something in lieu of a, a, an in-person presentation and we did have students make videos about the majors. And so I have no problem putting those up again um, to, you know, the more the merrier. You want to go look at it, go look at it. And so um, we could absolutely put those back up. Yeah, my son, my son chose his major uh, remotely. It was that year at home as well. Yeah. Follow-up question from Treasure Jackson about taking maps at home. You said no, and she asks even for home instruction. Oh, is there an um, allocation for home instruction? Yeah, I, you can't. No, I can't give you. You can't access it, it from home. So, uh, Treasure, if anyone is on home instruction, um, we'd have to figure out a way to get you. And and the problem is, I can't just get you to any school. Um, because they, they're not going to be giving it this day, you know, we're, the schools pick which day they give it. Um, so we'd have to figure out a way to get you, if we could get you to us for the day, if not, not, and then you, you know, um, yeah, let's talk about that offline. Okay. Um, hey, Tim. Hey, Tim, how are you? 
I'm all did good listening to the, the PA meeting. Okay, can we get everybody to mute unless you uh yeah, uh, I mute it. I mute it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mia. Um, Alden Donalds asks, can you suggest a highly recommended SAT test prep course? We have two that we use, right? Kaplan and um Princeton. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, no, I'm not going to go there. I mean, uh, the uh, I haven't taken the SAT in a long time, so um, but uh, the yeah, I, I think they're all excellent. Um, we've seen students get results from pretty much whatever course they've taken. To be honest with you, I'm not going to advocate one over the other. Um, yeah, and and to be honest with you, uh, I don't even even if I wanted to, I don't know enough about the differences between them. Uh, to really advocate for one, to be honest. Uh, Treasure Jackson asks again, my child is in 10th grade, and we were wondering if this year would be good to start looking at colleges. I say the sooner the better. What do you say, Principal Newman? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, that, that's, it's never too early to start thinking about college. Um, if you have the time starting to go visit colleges sophomore year, wouldn't it be the worst thing in the world? I mean, um, you know, you're talking to somebody, uh, my daughter now is a freshman in college, my oldest, the only one so far to go to college. And uh, I did it pretty late in the game. Um, you know, I guess it's not too early to, but I don't, it just depends on where you're at. I mean, if you have as many students, don't have an idea when they're in 10th grade of what they want to major in and whatnot like that really matters if you if you're making decisions already you know in junior year you know let's say that what you want to major in that's helpful in knowing what colleges are good and what you know what you're looking into and um there are definitely uh you know there's rankings of colleges everybody knows what the great colleges are and sort of rankings and whatnot but when you start breaking it down by major those lists shift dramatically and so um yeah so I, I I don't it just depends on where you're at and what your mindset is but there's no um you know there's other factors as well just looking at what a college looks like how many students go there what the setting is there's definitely students that look at a college and walk around and like fall in love with it right and then um and they're like this is the place for me you know based on it's small it's this it's that you know and they they get you know as students like to say you know i get a good vibe from it you know and so uh that means a lot to them you know but these other things you know it just it just matters, you know, where your head is at as a student and, you know, what kind of plans you already have. Um, but I, look, there's no harm in it. If you if you have the time to get out there, there's no harm in starting early. Yeah, I, um, I put this in the chat. I, I feel like we're not going to, it does, I don't want my son to have too much pressure, like in his 10th grade, like going, like right. figuring out where to go to college because he's going to have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Period. But, but like if we go to Washington DC, we might stop by a college on the way or the way back just to get them used to the idea of college. Yeah. But I wouldn't be like, you know, scheduling hardcore appointments or anything like that. Just like if a friend is on a, if you have a, a friend who's, you know, in college or you know, parent son who's in college, like they can go visit them or something, you know, just keep it really casual, I would suggest. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's good advice. And I, I would say that just as somebody who just went through it a little bit ago we found out more about colleges that she didn't want to go to versus that she did. And so most of the colleges she visited, she's like, nope, <laughs> you know? And so it wasn't, it wasn't the, and like, I, I, you know, it depends on the kid. And so, uh, but I, I think that's good advice that Mary gave of like keeping it casual, but like periodically, if you find yourself in Philadelphia, if you find yourself in Boston, like make it a little part to like pop in a little bit in a casual sort of way um you know and constantly keep uh, i i you don't need to be totally zoned in on it but keep uh, a periodic focus on college is the goal and you know and periodically do things to think around it okay camille also put a, a helpful link in the chat sharing information on the ccec elections if anyone is interested in applying you can do that through the nycsa as well uh, so that link is in the chat. 
Um, Camille also asks if uh, we could talk about the opt-out option for the map test. Yeah, um, I, I, I wouldn't call it that, an opt-out. Um, there's no like opt-out or opt-in. There's like, there's taking the exam and not taking the exam. <laughs> so I guess opt-out is you don't show up for the exam. Okay, so that's the policy. Well, it's not a policy if you you know if you don't if you don't come for the exam, you haven't taken it, right? And so there's okay. no uh, there's no penalty for that. Okay. Um, April asks, can senior students request CR on their mid-year transcript, and when will the request form be sent out? We'll send it out shortly. The CR option is available this entire year, not just for seniors, for everyone. And so you could, uh, so to clarify, uh, you could change a grade to a CR. You see a grade from January or June, not the other grades because they're not transcripted grades, but grades from January and June go on your transcript and you could change a grade after you see it to a CR. A CR means obviously credit. It's basically like a pass. You got credit for the course and it does not get weighted into your GPA at all. Uh, Tiffany Roberts asks, how long will it take for middle school regents to be added to my student accounts? How can we expedite the process if the middle school sent transcripts in June of 2022? Um, well, it usually doesn't, if they put it on, right, middle schools put it on and then um, they should have put it on, you know, when you're in middle school. But yeah, so if they didn't, and it it doesn't, re th therefore, if they did, when you get sent over, it's all right, automatically on the transcript. We don't have to do anything. If they're updating it, um, I don't know how soon this is, how uh, far in the past it was done, but it's pretty quick. They send the the, the information over to us. The guidance counselor gets it. The guidance counselor it fills out a form. The form goes to me, I sign it, um, and then it gets put in by the programmer after I authorize it. Well, you know, I, I usually look at those on a weekly basis, so I collate them, and usually once a week I sign off of them, and then the very next day they're inputted. Um, so it's a pretty smooth process. So if if you find that so this information is come from the middle school like a month ago, that's too long. Uh, I would email the counselor and see where this, what's going on. Uh, Tiffany said it was a private school, by the way. Um, I don't know if that changes. Private schools, most private schools don't give regents. Uh, I'm a little confused. Mm. Okay. But, okay. All right. Um, that looks like we've kind of got um, through the, uh, the end of the questions in the chat. I didn't know if there was any other Anyone last minute questions for, okay, here we go. Uh, from Rose Wong, Ray CR, is it all or nothing or can you choose specific subjects to CR? Oh, the, good question. I'm sorry for not clarifying that. It is absolutely specific subjects. You could do one CR, two CRs, all CRs. I, I just want to say this. Think through the CR situation, right? You could CR anything, but think through it, right? Colleges... I'm not going to say it's the worst thing in the world, but colleges are seeing, uh, if they're seeing a CR, they're going to take it the way they take it. It's It doesn't go in the GPA, but they see it and they know what it means. They know that you've taken a grade and turned it into a CR. They understand that situation. And so um, so I'm just saying, you know, if you're, if you're you know, I, I would not, if you have a 90 average and you get an 88 in a class, I would not CR that, right? And so- don't right. don't try to like you know game like GPAs by like you know that's not I wouldn't say a good position to go but um you know if you have an outlier class where you have you know very good grades and then one very low grade maybe you want to consider that um but you know don't don't think that uh I mean I can't tell you college by college what the implication would be if you have grades as a sophomore and you have all 90s, grades as a freshman, all 90s, and then grades as a junior, all CRs. I don't know how a college is going to look at that, right? And just think it through. 
Uh, April asks, if a senior CR is a class for semester one, would colleges see the CR or the numerical grade on their mid-year report? They would see the CR. That's what I thought. Um, okay, any last minute questions for Principal Newman? Uh, Alexander C. asks, do colleges look at ninth grade grades? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you know, and look, and, and about colleges, right? They do different colleges doing their different, sometimes they revamp your GPA. Sometimes they, they take out classes that they feel like taking out, right? So that they, they might just weight certain class and others. Some, uh, you know, we weight our AP classes. Some colleges strip that out. Many colleges do not. And so you might not know how they, you know, very often colleges make their own GPA. They might take physical education out. They might take home ec out. They might take, you know, all sorts of classes that they, you know, they want to see that you've taken and that you've passed, but they don't want to put it in your GPA. Some, some will make, uh, if you're applied to a major, like a math-based major, some will t make a GPA and then they'll make your math GPA on the side. And just to look at those, you never know what sort of they're going to do in that regard. So, uh, but they definitely look at, I've never heard of a college stripping out ninth grade grades. Alexander C. asks, is DDP grade added to the overall GPA? It is. So every single class you take, every single class um, is added to the GPA. I, I will, except for advisory. Advisory is truly pass fail. Um, but uh, every other is added to your GPA that you take, no matter what. Um, so yeah, there's no, there's no grade that we um, make that doesn't, that doesn't count towards your GPA. Okay, any more questions before we wrap up? Yes, Camille asks a question about the musical. She says her son received credit last year for this after school class. She was wondering how this works. Oh, that's a good question that I don't know the answer to. Um, your son received credit last year for this after school class. So you got you got credit for working on the musical. So I'm imagining you got some CR towards an art, right? Oh, you just wrote that. Yeah. You're going to get a credit towards an art, um, likely a credit that you don't need because DDP takes care of your art credit. So you're getting an extra credit. Good. Diane Chan asks, how do students get chosen for majors? Uh, uh, there's a very high percentage of students who get their, their first choice, as we know. Yeah, I, I would... Uh, I would like to tell you, you know, that 100% um, get their first, uh, last year, we got about 99% got their first choice. So it's pretty close. It's pretty, pretty close. No, numbers are limited in, in clicks of classes. So for example, one class could be maximum at the time of 34 students. So if 35 students apply the math major or 69 students, you know, it's in cuts of 34, you know, one can't fit. So, so maybe one kid wouldn't get it, but that's just when it comes down to the nitty gritty. And I try to make it the least amount as possible. The bottom line is that I want to get all the kids their first choice. So after I see what kids pick, um, it's my job to figure out how to make that happen. So maybe that means hiring new teachers. Maybe that means the only thing it's the the only thing that would really inhibit that is if something is affixed to a certain room, right? Like for example, it's great to have law classes in the courtroom, but I don't have to have them in the courtroom. That's not going to stop me, right? Um, but robotics has to be in the robotics lab. So if I have more classes than I can fit in a day in that lab, that's a problem. I haven't had that problem yet but that potentially would be a problem. There's certain things that have to get in certain rooms. So, but so far that hasn't come into play, to be honest. And, and uh, in the past, there were certain majors based on computer labs that I couldn't meet the demand, but then I built more computer labs and now I can. So, uh, so last- and Mr. 
Mr. Newman, I'd like to say, because I've got two kids, my, my first son was in aerospace and my second son was in law and society. And neither of my students are a 99 average. My kids are like right. a 90 to 92 and yeah. they both got their first choice. So you're doing a great job. All right. Thank you on that. But then that's a good example, right? Like flight school, uh, you have to be in the room with the simulator. You have to be. And so uh, I can only run a certain number of flight schools. And I only have one teacher that could teach flight school. That's a certified pilot. So if more than five sections of kids want it, I can't do it because I only got one guy to do it. Right. So I, I mean, I could try to go out and find another pilot. It's just, that's not as likely. And so, but look, I bent over backwards year after year to make these numbers as high as they have. And so, and last year was the year that we finally got it good. I built the computer labs I needed to take. You know, you're you're constantly playing catch up. You see the demand for software engineering is over here, but you only have this number of computer labs. So then you build more the next year, you're able to meet that demand if it stays um, at the same level. So last year is when, you know, after a number of years of toying with this and trying to catch up on facilities and uh, hires, I, I think we finally got that. And then look, this year it could be a whole, like people want majors in a whole different direction and certain other majors become way more popular. You never know. You never know what kids want, but I will tell you, I will bend over backwards to get them what they want. And so hopefully at the meeting, uh, the PA meeting after major selection, I'll be able to say something about, you know, high 90s um, where students get their first choice. Um, I had a question for you. Uh, can you uh, comment at all on um, the Wi-Fi that we've opened up uh, to the students? So, uh, yeah, that, that's also a very good question. So it, just uh, uh, I, I won't bore you with the ultimate details, but um, we've we've really uh, jumped through some like hoops on fire on this situation to sort of make this work. Um, so students did not have access to Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, uh, all the way up till December, because we simply didn't have the bandwidth um, to support that. If I let the students on, our computers would crash. That's everywhere from my computer where I do work to um, every single computer-based class we have. I mean, we'd have a huge percentage of classes like literally not happening. So unfortunately, I couldn't allow students on the Wi-Fi. Um, I did find out it didn't make me feel any better that a lot of large schools were not like, letting students on the Wi-Fi either. Um, you know, it seems so, somewhat of an injustice to me. And, and we, we I campaigned very hard to get us more um, uh, Wi-Fi capability. And right before the break, we did a couple of weeks before the break, we went, we got double our capability, What? but it was not nearly enough. The second we literally doubled our capability, our labs ate up the bandwidth. I could see it every single moment how much bandwidth we're using for my computer as a building on whole. And we went, as soon as we doubled our bandwidth, literally we were right back up into 90% usage without students being able to get on. So that clearly wasn't enough. Um, we advocated hard and the students really helped me in many ways. Um, and we got, uh, it turned out we needed hardware upgrades to go above what we were. Anyway, we got the hardware upgrades over the break. And then after the break, they doubled me again. So now I was four times what I was just a month prior. And I felt okay about it. Like, let's try it. So I let the kids in on a small scale, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I'm burning through. We're at 90% sometimes. Like, so it's not great. Um, but I did just contract out, um, to make a long story short, to, to take my bandwidth up. Uh, more than a bit more to get us safely in a zone where I think we'll be at with the kids on, we won't eclipse 50% usage. So that's going to happen in about uh, three weeks from now. So I am letting the kids on. I actually, I, I take that back. I, I, I didn't announce it, but I cut them off this week because um, we have computer-based finals and the MAPS assessments coming up. I didn't want to jeopardize any finals with students who might be, you know, using uh, our bandwidth forever they want to use it for. So um, I did cut it off for this week and I will bring it back um, for the beginning of the spring. So somewhere a week or so after that, um, I will get a, a pretty significant increase in bandwidth again 
um, at a pretty significant cost to the school, um, but uh, we will be able to then deliver, I think, safe levels. And uh, like currently now I have the kids on, but there are times that teachers are reporting to me that their labs are getting jammed up a bit. So um, yeah, so uh, just uh, in a few weeks, it should be smooth sailing. Uh, Ken, <clears throat> Ken Ho asks, as a follow-up on the Wi-Fi, is it all paid for by the DOE? No contribution from the PA and Alumni Foundation? Um, the uh, To be, uh, I mean, transparent, uh, I guess what I was talking to uh, before, the currently right now the DOE covers all our Wi-Fi. And when I see DOE, I'm not talking about the school's budget. I'm talking about DOE Central. Um, not like you want to know, but they basically cover utilities. I don't pay an electric bill out of our budget. I don't pay a water bill or an oil bill, and I don't pay a Wi-Fi bill. Like so, utilities are covered from by the DOE. I don't even know what the price points of. I have no idea how much electricity we use. It's you know so that's covered for every school and whatever. Uh, to get this expanded bandwidth that I'm looking at, this next round of expanded bandwidth that I'm looking at in three weeks, the school is going to have to pay for it out of our own budget, and that's that. It's not. It, it, it's a it's a decent amount, but it's something that we're able to afford within our budget. But yeah, so so it's going to be a combination of the DOE paying, you know, what we currently have, and me paying over not me, but out of our budget over what we currently have. Uh, Camille says, "I think utilities may go through the custodial budget, but she could be wrong." Yeah, I mean, another budget that I don't see. So I, I don't see their budget either. I don't know how much we spend on, you know, anything from toilet paper. I don't know the salaries of the, the employees right. that work there. Yeah, so uh, that may be that they that they know, what, you know, what it is and and may pay through, it, through their budget. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either, Camille. Okay. Shannon Goddard asks, are students allowed access to computers if they have to do classwork or they have to bring their own? Um, good question. Um, if you are in a computer-based class, computers are provided for you, usually desktops, maybe laptops there. If you are not, if you simply want a computer, um, I don't know, for your English class or something, we do not provide that. Um, if you, you could bring your own, uh, if you want to use that, I will say a vast majority of students do not bring in computers. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that's that's uh, surely has it. But maybe that's also because I've had the Wi-Fi off. Um, so, uh, yeah, but that that's not something embedded in the culture of the school yet. Um, but, yeah, we don't provide for a kid who just like I need a laptop. But on the other hand, if it's part of a student's accommodations by any means, of course, a laptop is provided. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, Mia just mentioned that Mary has her hand up. Mary? No. Hi, I just wanted to say that uh, we just put all the uh, PSAL uh, team games on the um, on the website under, uh, I'm not sure, PSAL or student events or something like that, sports events, athletic events. Um, one of the parents mentioned that at basketball games at other schools, there's a ton of parents there and kids cheering on the team. So it'd be nice if uh, parents just sort of looked at that and with their kids and tried to get them some of the games um, because I think they would like the support. Um, and I think when they go to other games, there's like cheerleaders there even. So, you know, it'd just be nice to have some more support for the sports teams because they're, they're, well, they're doing well and they have, you know, basketball's fun to watch. Mm. Lots of things are fun to watch. That's, that's it for me. Okay, any other questions? I actually have one follow up with Shani, but uh, I wanted to make sure that we had addressed all our concerns to Mr. Newman. Any other last minute questions? Uh, not only is Brooklyn Tech Wi Fi challenged, it looks like my apartment 3B is also Wi Fi challenged. Sure. And all my technical issues, I kind of skipped over Shani, and I wanted to give her the opportunity to talk about the teacher's gifts because she's done a banger, bang up job. <laughs> Second year in a row. Bang up job. Bang up job. Um, anyway, Couldn't yeah, resist. We, have, we have finally gone over all of the requests. Uh, we've gone through the approvals and now it's just time, a matter of time of getting everything ordered. So hundreds 
uh, packages should be arriving to the school very shortly. Uh, thank you to Mary, who, you know, is absolutely fantastic at, you know, hunting down the packages, contacting the teachers, and getting all of those things into their hands. So big round of applause for Mary for all of her help. And uh, hopefully we'll have some happy teachers, you know, very soon. Wonderful. Thanks again, Shani. Uh, you and Michelle done a Anytime. great job. Uh, Chieko Take asks, my son is, 10th, is in 10th grade and would like to skip pre-calculus and take AP calculus in 11th grade. Is there any way to do so? Um, uh, I'd want to know the reason. I, I mean, my, my knee-jerk reaction is no, um, especially not. Uh, even uh, even people who are not uh, not uh, advanced, we give them pre-calculus over the summer so they can get calculus senior year. But to 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 accelerate through a uh, through pre-calculus to take out AP calculus as a junior, I don't see I don't see the reason why. It makes no sense and. Uh, I mean, if you said, I want my kid to take multivariable calculus, I mean, maybe we could have a talk. But if you're just doing it, I don't know, for any other reason, uh, you'd be doing the kid a disservice by not taking pre-calculus. It's sort of a, a setup for failure. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and not a good reason. <laughs> so, so, um, let's, let's have your kids sit in the class first. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Or Mia, do you have any additional uh, new business or anything you want to raise? No, thank you, uh, Mr. Newman. Thank you, Mr. Newman. We really appreciate all uh, your the time that you give us and all the consideration uh, and your support. It's invaluable. No problem at all. Um, our next uh, PA meeting will also be remote. That's scheduled for Thursday, uh, February the 16th. I believe we'll probably go back to 6 p.m., which is our usually scheduled time. We went a little later this evening because of the uh, Junior Families College info session. Uh, we are also working on some of the college concerns in the PA, and there'll be more to come on that. Um, any last minute? Oh, wait, Mary's got... Me, me, Mayona has her hand up. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think you skipped my question. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I no problem. Because we, we currently working on uh, the sponsor, and then we get the question from the sponsor. It's like some of the high school, they have very famous uh, a club or team, like debate team, robotic team. So what is the most popular teams uh, or clubs in Portland Tech? What's the most popular clubs or teams? Um, I mean, some I'll just go by size, you know, like uh, the, uh, I mean, NHS, if you want to call them a club, they're obviously enormous. Uh, Beta is a very big club. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's really based on your own sort of what you're into. I mean, there are some clubs that normally get more kids, but... I would say beta as a club club, straight up club, beta is probably our biggest club. Oh, and we try to find out like is like which one is most like can I say successful? Because like maybe like we have very, very good uh uh effort at, at those teams. So like debate, low body, like you know. And yeah, I mean, some of the clubs are sort of quasi teams, and then you have like the young entrepreneur association, like through that. Uh, a kid developed a business and basically got him a free ride to Stanford. I mean, you, I mean, you never know, right? And so the club was great for him. And so, uh, you know, I don't, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if one club is really going to help you over another, like if, if the goal is like getting college and, you know, our, our chess club does very well, our, you know, our model UN does very well, our mock trial and moot court uh, club teams do very very well. A matter of fact, mock trial is a three time city championship. That's I mean not three times city championship. The last three years in a row city championship. So um, you know uh, debate so uh, very popular and and 
I mean, I don't know what popular is, and but you know, the like mock trials is a very small, small club team, and they're very, very successful. So, I mean, it's uh, I, I can't say what's going to help. I think, Mr. Newman. Talk. Yeah. I think I think some of the sponsors are looking at where they could could support the teams. I know that Queller was in one of our sponsors for Lunar New Year, and oh. they gave five hundred dollars to the robotics team. Um, they're I think they're looking to see who you know could could use some support. Oh, I got you. Yeah, let me let me think about that. It, it's not so much of look. There are some teams that uh, clubs that just just don't need money right like i mean in some respects like it, you uh so there are clubs that need money more than others um yeah so i mean debate comes to mind where they constantly want to go to these tournaments that are outside the city and they have to pay they have huge expenditures for you know hotels for kids for example and whatnot tournament fees are expensive but you know and then i have you know clubs like a movie club that just sit there and you know stream a movie and they don't cost anything you know and so there's so it's it's not a matter of you know some clubs just cost more money i guess that's it mostly through registration fees and whatnot so i, I could get a list to you uh tomorrow for th those sort of things and maybe some people uh, who have the some clubs that have the greatest need that'd Thank be great if you send it to me i'll get it to all of our to okay. our sponsors sure Okay, <laughs> looks like we are winding down. Uh, again, I just want to remind you, our next uh, general meeting will be on Thursday, February 16th. And um, I guess I would like a motion to adjourn. And could I get a second? All right, thanks. Again. Second. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much for attending. Thanks for bearing with me as we were having technological hiccups on my end. Uh, and I will look forward to seeing you all again next month. Lunar New Year, ready to go on February 3rd. And um, it's going to be a smash event already. We can know this. So have a good evening and we'll see you soon. Thank uh, you. More Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you very everyone. much. Thank, Thank you, very, everyone. Night. See you yeah. soon on the Friday Lunar, uh, Lunar New Year celebration. Right. Yeah.